Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and welcome to another episode of Tartaria Tuesday where we make Tartaria great again. Today we're going to listen to Max use a freak weather condition from 2010 and some misleading photographs to claim that sea levels are falling rather than rising. And where's all this water going? Into the earth to a secret ocean. So let's cue up the music and make Tartaria great again. Another interesting thing that I've seen on another channel is a report about how the oceans are receding. There's a lot of places around the world that are drying up. The oceans are not rising, as we've been told, you know, global warming, melting of the ice caps, the raising of the water levels, all this sort of stuff. Well, it actually appears to be going the other way. Ocean levels appear to be declining all around the world. And not just some places around the world, but there's reports coming from virtually all over the world. Now what Max is talking about is this right here. There was a slight fall in ocean levels between 2010 and 2011. Now this amounted to about 7 millimeters and according to this article what happened was we had abnormally large rains in the eastern half of Australia and it's called Lake Irie which is the lowest point in Australia. Now when this area got more than a foot of water the lower part of the lake filled up completely and the upper portion was at 75 percent. That's an awful lot of water that doesn't make it back to the oceans. Normally when rain falls on land it goes into rivers and those rivers carry that water back to the ocean and that's part of the global water cycle. But if this water is trapped in the interior of Australia it's suggesting that accounted for an awful lot of this drop in ocean levels, which again amounted to, oh, about a third of an inch. However, you'll notice in more recent times the sea level has gone up from 3 to 10 millimeters per year. So the fact that it was down uh, during one 18 month period really doesn't mean anything. And then using these pictures of low tide with very obvious tidal pools from retained water when the tide went out is disingenuous at best and outright misleading. And again, in looking at this information, try to put your beliefs of whether you believe the Earth is flat or a globe aside and just look at the information. It doesn't matter what the shape is, okay? We're talking about oceans here, not shape. Because the guy doing the research uses the word globe, there's no point in attacking him if you believe something else. There's a bigger picture. Focus. One person has even suggested that the oceans are leaking through the crust into the earth, and that perhaps there's a lower ocean that exists below this ocean, another ocean that exists beneath the surface of the earth. Now this is yet another good example of taking a grain of fact from a scientific paper and then turning it into something to fit your narrative. Now the scientific paper in question here is this one. And what it basically says is that under the ocean there are areas of hydrated rock, basically wet rocks. And what's happening as the tectonic plates subduct under each other, they carry with them these areas of hydrated rock. Now most of this water is just subducted into the interior of the earth and some of it does return to the water cycle uh, through volcanic vents, but a lot of it is trapped. Now nowhere in this paper is there any suggestion of a subterranean ocean. So this is just pure fantasy from incomplete information poorly understood by Max uh, to just basically tell a story. And sometimes that may bubble up and cause floods. Maybe it recedes before it does that, the way a tidal wave goes. Maybe it's all part of the whole mud flood technology. Maybe it's done electromagnetically. Maybe they drain the water out to do something else with it. Who knows? But it's very interesting that we are seeing so many Earth changes and so few people are noticing them. They, they really are. Not a lot of people are looking at this. Too many people are arguing about the shape of the construct. And I really think that the whole idea of the mud flood and this reset and everything that they are doing is far more important than attempting to discern the shape of the prison that we are in. I really do, folks. We really need to see the urgency of the situation that we're facing. We need to put down all of our stuff with each other. We need to stop fighting. We need to withdraw support from this system and turn and face the control mechanism head on. We really do. 
Because the only way to get out of this mess, folks, is to return to nature. The only way to get out of this mess is to put down the tech. If people aren't prepared to put down the tech, then we're not going to get anywhere. We're really not. You know, one of the things about science is you never have 100% agreement on any theory or any model of how things work. There's always going to be a few people that say, no, I think it's this way. Things like um, global warming due to increased industrialization and the burning of fossil fuels is pretty well documented. And the consensus of scientific thought is that it is man-made. There are, of course, natural cycles involved. But the effect of man is certainly speeding it along, and we're seeing changes in my own lifetime. Yeah, the whole thing has been a setup, and if you can really step back and look at the bigger picture, it becomes pretty obvious how it's all been done. Even leading us into the cryptocurrencies and stuff. I mean, cryptos could work in a sane world, in a normal world, if everything that we've got here, if this whole society had actually progressed the way we believe it did, and the technology had gone through its natural evolution the way we think it did, and it all led us to this point where we've now got these independent currencies, crypto could work really well. But you've got to be concerned about the term crypto. The cryptocurrency, the type of currency you take to the grave with you. Okay, so let's get this straight. It's called cryptocurrency because you take it to your crypt. Okay. How about we look at the real definition of crypto? Now, here's a dictionary definition of crypto. It seems to relate more to being under the surface or part of a larger diffuse group. Uh, examples could be cryptocurrency, of course. Cryptozoology means that there are hidden species that we have not yet discovered but are out there. And it also relates to cryptographic, which is code writing, because all of the cryptocurrencies are based on computer code. It has absolutely nothing to do with currency you're buried with. The type of currency they introduce just before there's another reset. You know, they burn all the knowledge, they digitize all the information, then they introduce the Kindle Reader for you to read it. So they're starting the fire, then Kindle Reader kind of disappears into the wayside and you start using Amazon Fire. So they're really burning the information. And then we get rid of all our real currency and we turn it into cryptocurrency, the type of currency we take to the crypt with us. So not only do we have this crypto or non-governmental currency, now all of our reading material is digitalized just for ease of erasing it, deleting it. I mean, okay, I just kind of like reading things on my iPad because my eyes are getting bad and I can make the letters bigger. And they do like to tell us what they're doing with all these words and titles that they put on things. So you've got to wonder exactly where we're being led, ladies and gentlemen. And for my part, I'm not really wondering that much anymore. I think I can see pretty clearly where we're being led. And I've been out of sea for quite a while and I've been attempting to alert people to the fact that we are in a state of clear and present danger. And I think it's important that people do pay attention to this. I really do, folks. I mean, I come onto these shows and I tend to be really cool and calm and polite and eloquent and just give you the information in a way that you can comprehend it in a way that hopefully will empower you. But, you know, I cannot stress the urgency enough. We really are in a state of urgency and we really do need to put down all of this squabbling and we need to step back and look at the bigger picture of how we are being set up and where this is ultimately going to lead to if we don't put down all of our stuff, agree to disagree on whatever issue it is that we believe and turn and face this problem, turn and face this system and withdraw support from it by giving support to each other. It's imperative that we do this, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. You know, while it's very easy to dismiss the ramblings of a lunatic and this mud flood concept, Max does actually have a point. We are at a tipping point in our, our human history. We have the ability to destroy our climate or change it. You know, I think now is a good time to rethink our society to some extent. Do we need to have single passenger cars? Do we need to have our goods transported by truck versus rail, which is more efficient? Do we need to invest in infrastructure? Um, we put a major effort together on a national level in the Apollo program. 
Wouldn't it be great if we could put that level of national effort into finding alternative fuels that are not generating greenhouse gases? It's food for thought, folks. Well, this is Bob the Science Guy. I'm signing out from Northern Michigan. Take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down there in the lower right corner. I'd really like to have you as part of Team Bob. Stop by and have a look at uh, some of the people that we've featured in our videos this week. And if you want, stop by my webpage and Patreon and support the channel a little bit. The links are in the description. Take care, guys, and we'll visit again soon.